Today we'll review the ESP32 touchscreen display from Maker Fabs. We'll get it out, test it out with a few examples, then we'll set it up as a YouTube chat client viewer with the YouTube API. This should be a fun one today. From Maker Fabs, we have the ESP32 S2 Parallel TFT Touchscreen Display. If you guys remember this PyPico kit, and I was really, really impressed by it when they contacted me that they had this ESP32 S2 board. I thought, geez, I wouldn't mind taking a look at that. This thing is just Wicked cool looking. That is a nice little touch. It comes with an SD card in the unit, 16 gig SanDisk Ultra. Now that is pretty cool of them. We have the ESP32 S2 on board, bunch of electronics, USB C, uh, GPIO broken out, and our touch screen display. They have pretty extensive little instructions on their website, and I think we should be able to get this working no problem. We have a reset and a flash button on board, and not much to it beyond that. This, I believe, is our capacitive touch control. Uh, they have a resistive touch unit as well, if you choose to go that route. Uh, but right now, the price point, I think, is quite reasonable on these. Uh, at time of filming, I think they were right around the $40 US mark. I, I don't think that's a bad deal at all for something like this, but we'll see how it performs. Right out of the box, let's see what it comes with for code on it. There is definitely an example sketch on board and I have automatic white balance on this camera right now so it's not going to be really indicative of what it looks like. Man that's sharp. That just looks awesome. Really crisp so pretty cool. Uh, off to a good start. Okay and a quick upload of their example from their website and their github. Nothing to it. ESP32 S2 and the Arduino IDE, and away we go. And that is our benchmark. And that gives us our microseconds to draw the different stuff on the screen, and it looks great. I like this. I am marginally excited for what we can do with these. Let's reset it again, take another look. Oh, cool, they used the Hackaday logo. And just wicked fast through all the examples and that is that so uh, i think say we move on and see what else we can do okay now back with the example uploaded for an fps sketch this is a quick monitor of frames per second when we're touching the screen and testing out the capacitive touch and sure enough super super responsive 111 frames per second no problem a little bit of tearing in the actual drawing of the ball now, i'm not sure that could be just the example sketch i don't know how refined this code is but sure enough this is like super super fast and responsive it feels good and i went ahead and got that protector off of there and man it just looks awesome it's really really crisp so i think this is going to make for really fun projects i really really overpowered cpu on it gonna be gonna be pretty neat i had to try one of their other examples here they have so many in their github this is the clock example and look at the smooth motion on that that gives you an indication of what we can do with FPS. That looks like the old clocks we used to have in school, the ones that look like they were full of liquid. That is pretty cool. And I don't know whether you can pick it up, but the hand was cycling at one hertz or is cycling at one hertz as well. You can see it dimming and brightening. Uh, the auto ISO on the camera might be hiding it, but wow, is that ever cool. Okay, I get it now check that out this display is just wicked looking and i get where we need the cpu horsepower now this is another one of their examples a lot of their example code is in chinese so having difficulty understanding the comments but uh, the example speaks for itself once you upload it just upload it and try it and i think we can figure out how they wrote the code by just reversing the the c plus plus shouldn't be a problem Wow, so cool. Neat from all angles too. Check that out. Really acute angle. You can still see other than the reflections on the bench. There you go. 
Cool. How cool is this? This is the Lo-Fi Beats YouTube channel. Uh, their chat streaming live using Brian Locke's library. Thank you, Brian. I reached out to him because I ran into a few difficulties with the library. It turned out uh, it was the ESP32 S2 board definitions. I had to roll them back a version and modify the code and mess around. Uh, I wasn't able to get it to scroll yet, so what I'm doing is just running a for loop and then rebuffering again, which is not ideal uh, for whoever leaves a message at the end of the screen because theirs will get quickly recycled, but it works. I am super happy with this. This gives me a way to have chat on my bench on an ESP32. How cool is this? So now when we live stream, we can monitor the chat super easy. I am really, really happy with this. I wanted a nice enclosure to have this on my bench for the live stream, so I went to their GitHub and found the board files. I was able to pull those into what I have left of my Altium trial, and then I was able to export the board file so I could use it in Fusion 360. In Fusion 360, I used my generic box template I learned from Noe and Pedro on Adafruit's channel, just rescaled it to fit, then adjusted it with some holes and uh, the cutout for the screen and nothing to it. Then I printed it out on the i3 Mega, made a little stand for the backside separately that glues on the back and it was all set. Enclosure STL files and all the code will be linked down below as usual. Four M3 screws are all that's needed to finish the project off. Since we put threads inside the standoff holes in the Fusion 360 model, they just thread right in and everything just fits beautifully. The snap fit cover goes on the front and you have access to your touch screen. I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. That is awesome. You need to use Brian Locke's library, which is linked within my code and I'll link it on the project page. He has a full instruction on how to set things up and how to get your YouTube API keys. And it's, it's truly a wonderful tutorial, so I don't need to cover any of that. My code just works here on the screen and just takes the data and puts it formatted for this screen. It seems to work pretty good. The stand is printed separately and then I use a little bit of super glue from the dollar store to glue it together. It makes it a lot easier for people to print nothing to it, stick it together and you're all done. Overall, I couldn't be happier how this project turned out and how this display performs. It finally fills a gap that I have had on my workbench for quite some time. I have wanted a way to view my chats uh, without having to go over to my live stream PC while I'm working on the bench and this finally does that. The display works perfectly. I think I'll find lots of uses for it. I hope you get to make one of these too. Take the code, make it better. Take the display project, make it better too. Hope you guys enjoy.